Welcome back to Paddy's Golf Tips. Uh, here we are at the Vivent Houston Open, and I'm going to do a few do's and don'ts of the golf swing. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Podrick Harrington. one do not keep your head down so one of the worst pieces of advice in golf people and you hear it given a lot put your head down it's going to get in the way so if I put my head down I'm stuck I'm going to lift it it's going to cause top shots if I manage to keep my head down here I'm going to lift again and cause top shots so do not keep your head down secondly don't keep your head still so when you're swinging a golf club if you try and lock you don't want to lock anything up but certainly if you're swinging you try and keep your head still you know they'll get to about there and everything after that is a compromise. You watch when I swing the golf club, my head turns that little bit and moves a little bit. Most players will move their head slightly, okay? So don't try and lock it down. By all means, keep an eye on the golf club, but definitely don't keep your head down. And don't keep it still. Okay, next, posture-wise. Don't flex your knees. Again, that's gonna knock you off balance, as you can see there. You take a nice, relaxed setup. A little bit of flex in your knees, not bolt straight for sure, but definitely don't flex your knees. That's a terrible thing to do for your balance and it also makes you look terrible. Don't stick your backside out. This posture is too rigid, very hard to keep in the golf swing. Again, a nice relaxed posture. You will see there that I'm moving and that's my next don't. Don't keep your feet still or your hands still when you're over the ball. When you're going to prepare to hit a golf ball, the right preparation, the way to prime yourself is a few little waggles with the club in your hands and a few little waggles with your feet like that. That gets you ready and gets you balanced very nicely when you move your feet. Don't lock them down, okay? Grip. Don't grip the club in the palms of your hands, okay? I've talked about this before. You, if I open up here, you grip it all in your fingers, just like so. You can see that here. If I pick up this golf ball, I'd always pick it up in my fingers. Either hand, I'd pick it in my fingers and then clasp my palm around. Okay, you wouldn't be trying to hold it in your palm and get something on. So you grip it in your fingers first and then your palm goes on. Same with the golf ball. Okay, grip in the fingers all the way down and then the palm's on. That gives you the ability to have mobile wrists, which is the next do in the golf swing. You must use your wrists and arms as much as you can in the golf swing very important so if we describe it like gears in a car your wrists are gear one your arms are gear two your hips and torsos are three and four if they all work together you've got five gears but don't go for gear three and four honestly you've got to get your hands and arms working first so you've got to have good mobile wrists and you've got to use them you've got to get that club flicking a bit with your hands to start off with get your arms passing your body out get nice movement in your hands and arms Generally, for most amateur golfers, it's about getting the hands and arms to dictate what the body's doing. Whereas maybe for very elite players, it's about getting the body to dictate what the hands and arms do, but they've already learned what to do with the hands and arms. So definitely a do is use your hands and arms as much as you can. Okay, uh, okay, we're backswing. Right, we've done your posture. Backswing wise, first of all, swing the club back at your rhythm, your normal rhythm. Don't take it back slowly, don't take it back fast. Whatever your rhythm is, don't try one or the other. Think about it like this again. If we went to throw a ball, we would never consider what pace we swung our arms at when we were throwing a ball. If you were throwing a punch, you'd never consider how to draw your arm back. You just let it happen. So do the same with the golf swing. Let your rhythm dictate what pace you go at. Some players are fast, some are slow. It doesn't really matter. It's what your natural rhythm is. Don't think too much about it. Okay, in the back swing. Again, we're prepping a little bit, we're moving our feet. We don't want to lock our hips down. This is crucial. This was quite trendy 10 years ago to try and get a very resist against your left hip. But again, that's about as far as I can go by keeping my left hip in this position and keeping this knee flexed. What we tend to see now is players, or the old time players before the 90s, let's say, and this is what I definitely recommend, they lifted their heel, okay? 
So if you lift your left heel, and this is a definite do, lift your left heel. My right hip might move a little to the right and then it comes in behind me. This is, and high. So it's a nice position, it's nice and high in that position, there's a good angle there, okay? There's separation there. This is a powerful position. We don't want a sway over to the right. So we definitely, if we lock down and keep our feet in the ground, there's a chance you're gonna to sway to this side, which is really you're gonna to struggle to hit the ball well from that position. Let it turn, so lift your heel, let it turn. Length of backswing, okay. Generally, shorter is better. Shorter usually is more powerful. Now, we know there are people who have long swings, but this is what happens in the backswing. So we make our backswing and we get to a point. The point of maximum stretch in your backswing, okay? You wanna go just short of that. The reason being is you wanna go just short of your maximum stretch so that in the downswing, you get to your maximum stretch. So the stretch, the sh stretch shortening is meant to happen in the downswing. That's how you get the most power. So go just short of your maximum and then stretch it more. Get that X factor as they talk about in the downswing, okay? Great way to do that. We've lifted our left heel, plant our left heel. That's the best way of starting a golf swing. Get to the top of your back swing, plant your left heel. That will give you the most power, give you the most stretch. Now, yes, going longer can be helpful if you can maintain your, or maintain your stretch or just shorten your stretch. But what happens when most people go longer, and this is a definite don't, so you get to a point you're good, and then to go longer, people lift themselves out of that stretch. If you lift out of a stretch in the backswing, if you go too far and you lose your stretch, you're losing your accuracy and power. So don't overswing in the backswing if you lose your form. Okay, some of the long drive guys can do that, but they keep their form. I recommend for most people, try and swing a little bit shorter than they think. Yes, give it a good hit from there, a little bit shorter than they think. Generally, the rule is have a shorter backswing and a longer follow through. Whereas a lot of poor strikers will have a long backswing and a short follow through. So the definite do is shorter backswing and a longer follow through. Okay, so we get into our downswing. We plant that heel. Now from here, what's interesting is, and I have to go back to the backswing a little bit. In the backswing, we don't want to drop our head, okay? Because if we drop our head, what's going to happen? We're going to pop up too early, okay? And we can cause pop shots. We want to kind of keep our head constant. Some long hitters will actually lift their head a little bit in the backswing. And the reason why we want to constant or lift a little bit is because we want to start our downswing by going down. So our knees go down, our torso goes down, and our head goes down. That gives you the compression, the hit on the golf ball. So we want to lift it down. And once we're here, now this is the key. You explode up on your left side and back, okay? So look, you can see there, up and back, this left side. Now amateurs, when they first start off, beginners do that nicely, but it caught, they actually top the ball doing it. Because what happens is, as they explode up, their right side comes up with them. That's no use. We want a situation where our left side is exploding up and back, but our right side is actually staying down. If I do that onto the camera, you'll see. You can see how much I'm opening up, but this right side, is staying down and covering the golf ball. I'm crunching in here on my right rib cage. I'm in a good position to hit the golf ball. My left hip is high, my left shoulder is high. Everything is stretched up and braced on my left side, but my right side is under. Whereas people who top the ball doing that move, the right side comes up and that causes the top. So definitely keep your right side down in the shot, but allow the left side to explode up. Lastly, uh, I think it's lastly, I'll probably come up with something else. The only one thing you can do in the golf swing that does no harm at any stage and is always good for your swing is hold your finish. So if you can finish your golf swing, okay? Now what you will see is I'm stretched up here, a little bit of it, of an arch back. My right side is under, if I go down the line, you will see my right side is under and my club is pointing towards the target if you're flexible enough. I'll probably finish like that because I'm a bit old at this stage. Okay, stretch, toe up like so. If you can get to a finish, and if you're and if you're not as flexible, that's a good enough finish. As long as you're balanced, try and be straight up the left side. As long as you're balanced on your left-hand side, it means you've moved properly through the golf swing. 
you, you don't have to think of how you moved. If you can get to that position, it means everything worked. What happens to most people is they try and stay still and they finish like this. They step backwards, okay? Whereas if you just concentrate on finishing in some sort of position like that, that would be the most advantageous thing you could do for the rest of your life for your golfer, having a nice balanced finish. Uh, outside of that, I would say to you, give the golf ball a hit. So on the golf course, you should be playing at 90% of your speed. But I would say to everybody, once a week hit 20 golf balls at 100%. And 100% for you should feel like 110%. You, you really do have to really swing hard at it to get push yourself to that 100% and then play within yourself. But you've got to push the speeds up. You do not want to swing too easy, especially if you're taking this game up later. Or if you're new to the game, the first three months is all about speed. Don't worry, and then strike, and lastly, accuracy. If you're playing the game a long time, I would say keep your speed up because the main reason why people give up the game when they get to their 70s is because they lose distance. So keep working on speed. It's only 20 balls a week will keep you there. Uh, you can't always swing easy. Sometimes you've got to give it a hit. Uh, I think that's about it when it comes to the golf swing. That's all my do's and don'ts.